Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because we actually have a dog that just had a leg amputation last night and we're gonna be picking him up this morning. So I wanted to show his three day progress after his amputation. His name is Ivor and he's a really sweet pity puppy. And just so you know his story, before we got him, somebody found him in a ditch, unable to walk with his back leg being injured. So yesterday he had his amputation in the evening. The vet kept him overnight for pain meds in observation. And today we're gonna to be able to pick him up. So we're really excited to see him again we had him for about a week before this amputation and I'll show you this little video of him he was limping he could barely use his back leg so he's gonna be doing so much better he's like the fifth dog I think we've had with an amputation and they all do so good dogs adjust so quickly and I just kind of wanted to take you through the first three days of his healing and getting used to having his amputation in case anybody ever has a dog with an amputation or has any questions about it I think this would be helpful so John's actually inside a house looking at a house right now and then we're gonna be headed to the vet to get him him. We have B here with us in the car, so it's just going to be kind of family day hanging out with Ivor and making sure he's feeling better. We just got to the vet, so we're about to go inside and get Ivor, and I'm a little nervous because I hate seeing him in pain. Hopefully he's not in too much pain since he was sedated overnight, but... It is scary. They scream like uh, we've had... This is our third amputation? I thought it was like the fifth. Maybe. But uh, they like scream really bad, like for the next couple of days, or they wake up screaming and they kind of look at you like you're doing it to them, and it's really sad. Yeah, they have like muscle spasms for the first few days where they removed the leg or the limb. And so, hopefully, with the medications, which I'll show you when we get home, what he's on, hopefully, those help and um, he doesn't have too much trouble. So, yeah, all right, let's go get him. Okay. <laughs> How, how's he doing? Um, he's doing good. He got his IV taken out earlier, and he's a little bit dramatic about it. Oh, so, okay. Hey. But pain-wise, he seems to be doing pretty good. I'm going to make sure that he gets some Remedil to go home with you guys. Okay. Oh, you're doing good. Yeah. Yeah, come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, you're doing so good. Yeah. Good boy. All right, so we just picked him up. He is doing great. He's in a really good mood. Of course, he's on a ton of drugs, uh, so that might be the reason for it. How's he doing back there? Good. He's so excited to see B. They're playing. <laughs> you give kisses. He's doing great. He's like the best that we've ever picked up a dog after an amputation. Like, he seems like he's feeling the best. Yeah, I was like really surprised. Like, as yeah. soon as he came out, he was licking our faces and all happy. He's not like drugged up or anything. Well, he is on drugs, but yeah. he's not like uh, out of it. I think it's because his leg hurt so bad before. He's just probably glad that it's gone. Right. Um. All right, buddy. Well, let's get you home. He's doing fine. He was running around outside, went to the bathroom fine, and now he's hungry. So as you can see, he just ate his breakfast slash lunch. I think it was his brunch, and he seems to be doing great. Now, he did get some IV pain meds right before they took his IV out, so I'm a little worried about when those wear off. So we're going to keep a really close eye on him, but right now things are going really well and better than expected. Okay, I'm back. So, Ivor has been doing really good. We've had to keep him calm because when he was on all the pain meds from the vet, he wanted to play and wasn't having any pain. But now he's a bit more sore. I think those meds have worn off and he's just kind of laying in his bed and hanging out. He has not tried to chew his incision site yet, but we have a plan if he does. Right now he's gonna have some gabapentin and some Rimadil. So both of those are pain medications. Gabapentin is a controlled substance, so it actually had to be picked up from the pharmacy. And it's medication used for nerve pain and just pain overall. And then Rimadil is basically ibuprofen for dogs. So it's an NSAID. So he'll be on those two meds. I also wanted to show you guys what his incision looks like on day one. I'll show you on days one, two, and three so you can see the progression. That's what it looks like right now. It is sutured and it actually looks really good. It's not too swollen. This is swollen over here. That will go down and it won't be as pointy, but it's a little bit swollen, but it looks really good. It's not too red or anything. It's important to keep an eye on it every day. Make sure it doesn't get worse or get infected or anything like that. 
Mm. Don't feed the dogs all your crackers, then you're gonna be sad. They're all gone. Here, you could just split it with them. One more thing I wanted to tell you is there has been one issue. I said earlier he didn't have any problems, but there actually has been one. He was pretty much potty trained with us after a week. He would only have a few accidents if we were gone all day. He would have like a pee accident. But so far tonight, he's had five pee accidents, which is extremely unusual. And I'm not sure it's because he's in pain and he oh, see, you gave all the, you gave all the puppies your crackers. Now they're gone. Oversharing. So I don't know if it's because he's in pain and that is why he doesn't want to go outside to pee, but he's definitely having accidents in the house, which is fine. We put out a pee pad for him and stuff, but it's unusual for him. But we'll just wait and see how that works out the next few days. I'm sure it'll just end up being fine tomorrow. And if you're new to my channel, um, I can't show B because she's our foster daughter. So that's why I keep turning the camera every time she walks behind me. So that is why she's not in the video and I'm calling her B, which is an abbreviation, but just so you know. All right, I have to say see you later. See you later. Check in later. Really quick before we go to sleep, I just wanted to show you guys where Ivor will be sleeping. So that is our bed right there. He'll be sleeping in here. We have a little gate and he has a comforter and then a pee pad on top just in case he has an accident overnight. We wanted him to be close to us, but he can't sleep on the bed with us like normal because I'm scared he'll try to jump down in the middle of the night or somebody will roll over and accidentally hit him in his surgery spot. So. This is gonna be the best spot for him. He's just gonna be contained and then we can hear him if he cries or anything like that. Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday morning now, so it's day two that Ivers had his amputation and he did really well last night. It was his first night at home and he did great. He actually slept the entire night. The only thing that happened was he started kind of trying to lick his wound, so he got the shirt of shame here, which I'll show you how I did that because we're all out of cones at the moment. So today we're gonna to go out and get a cone, but last night he got the shirt of shame. He didn't seem to be in pain last night. He really slept the whole night. He hasn't had any more accidents in the house. So I think that was either just from the catheter or just from being out of it from the medication. He held it all night and then this morning he went like normal and he hasn't had any accidents. So that was great. I gave him his gabapentin and his Rimadil this morning. Um, he didn't even seem to be in too much pain right before I gave it, but I'm giving it on schedule anyway to try and stay ahead of the pain. I'm going to show you his shirt and I'm also gonna show you his incision. He just wants to play right now. So really the hardest thing has been getting him to stay calm. Okay, ignore my house. There's toys everywhere, but Ivor, show everybody your shirt. We double padded his bed because we were worried that he might pee in the bed, but it seems like he hasn't. So this is just a regular t-shirt. I put it on him and then tied it right here because the top is too big. And then I cut a hole for his tail and a hole for his left foot, the leg that's left, and then I tied this in a knot because it was still too loose so that he can't get to his incision. And that was my method of containing him when I didn't have a cone. But I think the cone will be better because this shirt's actually a little uncomfortable for him. It's kind of tight when he's like walking and stuff. So we're gonna get the cone today. Say hi, Ivor. How are you doing, buddy? He's doing really good. And look at that cute little face. Look at that cute little face. Ignore my voice too. Okay, let's show you the incision. I'm gonna put the camera down for a second, take his shirt off. Here's his incision this morning. It's a little bit more red, but that's pretty normal. He didn't get to lick at it last night because I heard him before we went to bed. As soon as he started trying to do it, I put the shirt on him. So I know that he didn't cause that redness. It's probably just a little swollen around the sutures. But it looks really good. It's not draining anything. It's not any more swollen at the site. I don't see any bruising or anything like that. So we'll keep an eye on it, but so far it looks pretty great think he's gonna heal up just fine. I'll give you guys a walking update next time we go outside, which should be in just a little while because he just ate breakfast. I don't wanna give you one with a shirt on because he looks so clumsy anyway. Oh, there he goes with a sock, but he can't really walk with a shirt on. So I'll give you a walking update soon and I'm really happy with his progress. I'm really happy that he's not in pain and everything's going pretty great. So see you in just a little bit. We just got home from the store. So we got the cone, but really fast before I put the cone on this guy, I'm gonna show you what he looks like walking down the hallway.
Okay, back inside now, Ivor is eating a Whimsy's bone. I love those bones. Those are the only ones we really give the dogs, so they really enjoy those. They're made out of like vegetable protein, but I just wanted to say he got a little crazy running down the hall, so I had to stop filming and kind of restrain him. So it's hard to not walk him on a leash because if we don't walk him on a leash, he likes to run like you just saw in the hallway, and he's not supposed to be running yet until he gets the stitches out, so I had to put him on a leash and take him out like that. And then my other dog's barking right now because he wants out of the room. But he's doing good. After he's done with his bone and not distracted anymore, I'm probably gonna have to put the cone back on him because when he's not distracted is when he tends to wanna lick at his incision site. So I'll show you when I put the cone back on. I don't think he's ever had cone on before because he's not neutered yet or anything. So I don't really know how he's gonna like that. But I think I like it better than the t-shirt because it's less restrictive. We are not a huge fan of the cone. Ivor thinks if he pouts, maybe he'll get the cone off, poor baby. He's been laying here pouting, but it'll get used to it. And it's better than the shirt because he can actually move around better. Good morning, everybody. It is day three. It is Sunday. And we just woke up a little while ago, had some breakfast. And now we're just hanging out, playing. I just wanted to update you on how he's doing. So he had kind of a rough night. I think he was a little more sore last night than the other previous nights. And um, he woke up crying a couple times in the middle of the night. We had to go pet him, take him outside, and give him a little extra medicine. But he seems to be feeling better this morning. So that's really good. He ate his breakfast and everything. So I'm not too worried. He's still walking fine. I'm going to show you his incisions so you can see how that's progressing. Okay, let's take a look. Looking good there. It's getting a little scabbed over, which means it's healing. Hey, buddy. It's not any more swollen. I actually say the area around the stitches is less swollen. And he wants to play. <laughs> right here, it was leaking a little bit, but looks better now. It's drying up, so looks pretty good. He's being a little lap dog right now, but I just wanted to close out this video and just kind of tell you guys about where he came from. So he was a stray brought in after he was hit by a car to Kanawha Charleston Humane Association or KCHA, which is the shelter over here. And KCHA has its own veterinary team and they are amazing. The veterinary and the vet techs, everybody involved is so awesome. They take such good care of the animals. They are dogs, cats, really whatever animals walk in the door. I've seen pigs there before, uh, rabbits, all sorts of things. So I wanted to share the donation link if you guys want to donate to KCHA or donate to Ivor's Care. His name in their system is actually Cat because that's what the person who brought him in thought he was. They thought he was the cat, so they started calling him that, but we renamed him Ivor. So if you want to donate to Cat care through KCHA. I'm going to leave all the links below. They are a nonprofit shelter. They do amazing work around here and I've been fostering for them for a few years. I absolutely love them and everybody there. They're just so awesome. I really can't say enough good stuff about them and the things they do for the animals in this community. You can donate to his care, his surgery, or you can donate to sponsor his adoption fee. The money donated will be used for any of those things and it's greatly appreciated. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I also wanted to close out this vlog because today is just going to be a chill day and he's doing great. So this was a pretty uncomplicated recovery. I have had dogs before who had like hematomas because they wouldn't stay still or bit on their stitches or just had a lot of trouble with pain and muscle spasms. But Mr. Ivor here is doing really great and I'm very happy with his recovery. So in about 10 days, he'll get his stitches out and then he'll be ready for adoption. So He'll go to his forever home and we'll be sad to see him go, but we'll be so happy that he's at his forever home. And that wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Next week, you'll be seeing my price breakdown of my Puerto Rico trip. So as always, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.